Welcome to the Real Live Faith Podcast. I'm Shelby. And I'm Janice. Life is a parable. All of creation points to God the Creator. We're going to be talking about how we see this in action in our everyday lives and how we use our good days and our mess ups to grow in our relationship with the Lord. We don't know in what season of life you find yourself currently, but let this be a season of new life and growth. Join us as we talk about having real faith in real life. The end of the year is often a time of looking back over our past, whereas the beginning of the year is usually a time of looking forward into our future. You know, as I have looked back through the years, I sometimes miss what once was. I think we could all say that. But I do anticipate what's to come. And as I look forward into the future and the empty nest that our home will soon have on the horizon. I just can't help but reflect on the current season I have with my family. I don't really remember hearing or reading anything about the seasons of parenting. I mean, there's the, you know, what to do when you're expecting. There's the toddler years. You hear advice, you know, when you have elementary age kids, but it just seems like it should have been obvious. But Sometimes we just get so busy and we don't see it until later. I do miss those little feet in the busy hands, though. They're still around, but just in different ways. They're coming and going to work and college. They're fixing cars and repairing things, watching movies together, going shopping. But one thing that has weighed on my mind is the need to be intentional. I really want to be present for these remaining years I have with my kids while they're still at home. You know, tomorrow is never promised, but eventually, Lord willing... They will move out. They will get married. They'll have careers. They'll start their own families. And so I just want to redeem that time and cherish each moment. As our kids get older, I think sometimes it's easy for us to get tempted to be busy treating them like adults, all the while forgetting that they're still kids. They're still in need of our love, our encouragement, our wisdom and understanding. And we see these once little ones grow up and they start their adventure in the real world and so we get tempted to hurry them through the process but if we're not careful those words that we speak to them can seem more oriented toward their finances career placement or instructing them how to live their life instead of being helpful to them or loving to them we end up giving them a reason to be anxious so i want to make just a small suggestion love your kids right where they're at in life. Inquire about their interests and the things going on in their realm and just simply enjoy their presence. Whatever age they are currently, enjoy it. If they're little, read a book with them. Play their favorite game together. We used to have game nights all the time when our kids were little. If they're teens, maybe enjoy those crazy car rides. Turn the radio up, play a song, you know, from your youth. Maybe the clean version, right? (laughs) Laugh as they share funny stories and texts. And if they're college grads, pray for them and pray with them as they embark on their work life as they go where the Lord leads them. But the most important thing I think I've learned in raising kids the past 20 plus years is that it's more important for them to follow God's will and plan for their life rather than my plans. Because here's the thing, God made our kids right? We gave birth to them, but God is their creator. He's the one who gave them the gifts and talents they have. And he already knows what they're good at. He already knows where they should be using those gifts and talents that he gave them because he's the one who gave them to them. Yeah, I remember you always encouraged me in whatever little interest or phase I took to at any given time, whether it was ballet, tap dance, cheer, play acting, writing, or sewing and drawing. You always gave me ample opportunity to explore those interests and see how long they would last. I'm so thankful for you and dad encouraging me like that and humoring me through those phases because I may have never figured out what God's plan for me was if you had tried to discourage me from those interests because you thought they were silly or just a childish phase. Yeah, and that's funny because we were taking a drive the other day and we went by a church. They have, you know, upward basketball and cheer and um, dad said, wonder what all the ruckus is over there early this morning, you know, and I said, well, it's upward. He said, oh, man. And I thought, yeah, we paid our dues. We we did that a long <laughs> time ago. And every Saturday morning was spent in the gymnasium doing upward cheer and basketball for the church. <laughs> 
Yeah, and even with that, I tried basketball once, I think, maybe twice. And I'm even thankful for you allowing me to say no to some things. Because how would I have known that I didn't like it if I didn't try it? And I'm sure you never expected me to become a pro player, but allowing a child to say no to things they don't like is just as important as encouraging them in the things that they do like. It is important. And I think it's just something that parents need to make more time for. It seems a lot of the time parents get absorbed with their jobs, with their careers, and they just kind of separate their their life from their kid's life. And the kids are just more like an accessory. They just kind of come in and treat the home like a hotel. You know, they come in and use the bathroom, maybe grab something to eat and go to bed, get up, shower, and leave again. And so there's this separation between parents and children of all ages. And that's something that, you know, it takes a lot of humility to be able to put aside the things that you want to do as a parent, you know, as an adult, and help your kids develop their interests. Not that you're worshiping your kids, not that you're putting your kids above your spouse, and not that you're making um, the whole world revolve around your kids. It's just humbling yourself to be invested in your kids. You're to be good stewards of your kids. You know, God gave them to you. So you have to be good stewards of what God has given you. We're not saying that you're to make them the center of the universe, but humble yourself and take the time to allow them to see their gifts and talents that God has given them be developed. Yeah, and it may seem hard to pay attention and be intentional like that, especially if both parents are working or you're a single parent. But if you just take the time to notice little things, like a little kid's going to tell you if they don't like something, but if they do like something, you know you're going to hear about it. So really, if you just observe, you can usually pretty early on tell what your child is naturally inclined towards. So instead of ignoring those God-given gifts and talents in our kids, we need to help them develop these gifts and pray that they're used to glorify the Lord. And it's the same way with teens. If you have them or even were once one, you know that they really don't like to be told what to do. And it may be tempting for parents to give up at this stage, thinking, well, they don't want me involved anyway. But your job hasn't gone away. As teens, they're now trying to figure out what their purpose is and how they fit in with others who have their same interests and what to do about others who are not interested in their same hobbies. As parents, your job has actually gotten harder because now, in addition to trying to encourage them to explore real-world examples of their interests, you're also responsible for making sure they can do so safely and with godly influences. The last thing you want for them to do is end up either doing something they hate for the rest of their life, or what may be worse, they're using their God-given talents in dark, worldly environments among all kinds of evil. They need your guidance, but they also need to learn at their own pace. A good example of this in scripture is Jacob when he made his journey after meeting Esau in Genesis 33. Esau invited Jacob to travel with him back to his home in Seir in the region of Edom, but Jacob declined. Instead of making his children and livestock keep up with Esau's quick pace, Jacob slowed down to the pace of his family and considered their health and ability above anything else. Genesis 33, 14 says, Please let my Lord pass on before his servant, and I will proceed at my leisure according to the pace of the cattle that are before me and according to the pace of the children until I come to my Lord at Seir. I love that passage because it really shows us that Jacob had a tender concern for his own family and his animals. He was a good father to consider his children and not lead them too quickly. He was also a good shepherd to consider his livestock and not drive them too fast. It's just a really good example for us to follow. But Jacob is not the only one to example this. Jesus also exampled what it looks like to be compassionate and considerate of children, as well as animals. Isaiah 40 verse 11 says, Like a shepherd, he will tend his flock. In his arm, he will gather the lambs and carry them in the fold of his robe. He will gently lead the nursing ewes. John 10 verses 11 and 14 say, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. I am the good shepherd, and I know my own and my own know me. Through the example of Jacob and Jesus, we can learn to be patient with our kids and keep their pace. We can set aside our pride and put on humility. Instead of getting in a hurry or trying to keep the pace of the world, we can consider the welfare and future of our children. We may get in a hurry for them to reach their destination, but we need to proceed at leisure 
and according to the pace of the children, because their legs are short and their muscles are still growing and strengthening for the road ahead for when they're older. And it's for their benefit and protection that we stay with them and guide them, teaching them and helping them along the way. If we take the time to pay attention, then we'll see that we actually have much to learn from our kids. They live at a different pace. And if you have kids, then you know exactly what I mean by that. You know, they take time to see the world and experience God's creation. They always, when they're little, they'll come home and they'll tell you about all the things that they have seen, the things they've heard, what they've experienced. When they go outside, they'll come back and bring you those mud pies and things, right? They don't worry about their needs being met because they depend on mom and dad to provide for them, right? Jacob's children in the Genesis 33 account can also teach us some things. In their childlike faith, they followed in the caravan without questioning. They did not fear what was ahead. They didn't worry about where their next meal would come from. They traveled with their father out of dependence and obedience. And really, that's how we should follow Christ. Depend on him to provide for our needs and obey where he leads us. So in whatever season of parenting, if you've got little ones, infants, elementary age, teens, slow down, enjoy the time. Don't push your children. Don't lord your authority over them. Be an example to show them what humble servitude looks like. And think of Jesus. He doesn't berate, belittle, or speak in a condescending manner to his children. He serves them so they will know how to be. He sets the example and he involves them as he is teaching them and showing them the right way to be and the right way to take care of their bodies, and their homes, and their lives. That reminds me of John 13, 15. It says, I have set you an example that you should do as I have done for you. You know, God's the one who gave us our kids. They belong to him, and we're just stewarding them for a short time. We have the years of our earthly life to love them and lead them. Our job is to raise them to know the Lord, and if they place their faith in him, then we'll have all eternity to rejoice and be with them. So slow down, pay attention, Take note of your child's interests, strengths, and skills. Listen when they lose interest, and don't push a non-essential hobby if they simply don't like it. Lead them in the way of the Lord so they can use their gifts and talents to glorify Him. Maybe you're wondering how you can specifically encourage your kids or love on your children of all ages. And, you know, maybe you're thinking, well, it's a lot easier when they're little. You know, I can watch a movie with them, or I can put Legos together with them, or, you know, as they get older, you you go to their sports games and you support them in that way. But even as your kids grow into young adults, you can still love on them, encourage them, and build strong relationships with them by just inquiring about their life. You know, when you call them, don't tell them, how they should be living and what they should be doing, right? They're, they're adults now. So instead, inquire, ask, and don't ask with the intentions of snooping or being condescending, but ask with genuine care, just like you would a friend. You know, how is work? How is it going? I remember when my kids first got jobs, I asked them for a list of their coworkers. And I They were like, why do you want to know who I work with? And I said, because I want to pray for them. And it was amazing just what, how that impacted them to know that I was lifting up their coworkers by name every week in my prayers and just praying and knowing that, you know, I'm on your side. I, you know, maybe you don't like where you work. Maybe you're struggling on your job, but just knowing that mom and dad are praying, you know, that's just a simple way to reach out. Um, The other thing is, you know, sometimes it's so hard in this world and we feel like we don't know what our purpose is. And especially as young adults, even now, nowadays, you know, they go through, I don't know, two, three, four, five different college majors. You know, well, I thought I wanted to do this and I think I'm going to go in the field of this. And then they'll switch their major part way. And then, goodness, probably, I don't even know a percentage, maybe half the time you graduate with one thing and end up doing something completely opposite of what your degree is in. And so I think the struggle in the world today is, you know, what, what is my purpose? What am I supposed to do? Who, who am I? And so I think it's really important to help our kids to see just the truth that is found in Psalm 139. God created us, right? God created us. He formed us. He knitted us together. Where? In our mother's womb. 
right from the get-go, God was putting the needle and thread together, embroidering so spectacularly the creation of your children. And so it's important for them to know that. Who are they? Who were they created to be? What is the recipe of me, right? Who, how was I put together? Who am I? So try and help them. Sit down with them and help them to make that list, that recipe of who they are based on Psalm 139. How did God put them together? What were the gifts that God gave them? You know, when my kids were little, it was really easy because they were at home with me. I, I wasn't working. And so I had all day to observe them and watch how they would act and what they would do. When my son was not even two, he would take the little race cars and run them on the ground, you know, on the floor, and he would take the magnetic train set and he would put his head almost parallel to the floor, parallel to the table, looking to see how the magnetic train (laughs) stayed (laughs) on the track. It was such a curiosity for him. And it was like, what are you doing? And, you know, he's two, he, you know, he's two, he can't really, you know, formulate a coherent sentence to tell you what he's doing. He's trying to figure out how it works, mom. Yeah, he's trying to figure out how it works. And so he's, and I thought, you know, that's how God made him. God created him to want to know how does this stuff work? And as he got older, he would start taking apart plastic toys, his little plastic vacuum cleaners, uh, ink pens. I would find the parts on the table. I'm like, what is going on? <laughs> and he's just always had this creativity in his brain. You know, it's how he was wired. It's how he was made. It's how he was designed by God to be. You know, it's how God knit him in my womb is he loves to figure things out. He has this engineering mindset of how the world is put together and he loves it. And, you know, for my daughter, when she was young, she had we had an old laptop and it didn't connect to the internet. It literally just had Microsoft Word and that was it. And every night we would, my husband would type a letter to her and then she would wake up and find it and she would answer it back. And that was their, uh, oh my goodness, that was the old fashioned <laughs> chat message, yeah. you know, text thread from way back early 2000s, you know. And so she did some stuff where she would play on her computer and make a uh, little cards you know or yeah, with what? powerpoint yeah and just she's like i like this i like doing this she loved taking pictures she loved art in general and she just would do it all the time you know and that's so easy when your kids are at home you look at that and you're like well it's just kids being kids you know all, all boys play with matchbox cars and all girls color and coloring books but that's where you need to pay attention look because god made them he made them the way they are and they are unique and they have unique gifts and talents. And so, you know, like I said, go back through Psalm 139, look through there and read the truth of how God knit you and knit your children together from birth. And if it's hard to kind of see just by observing, ask them. The best way to find out about somebody is to ask them. They'll tell you what you want to know. Ask your kid, what do you like to do for fun? What are your favorite things to do? What's your favorite food? What's your favorite color? And if you need help coming up with questions, we have a free resource called The Recipe of Me. And it's just a list of questions that you can ask your kid or even yourself if you want to figure out how you work, how God made you. Answer these questions and it will show you the way that God knit you in your mother's womb. When I went through this, I was making a list of these things and I asked my husband and both of my kids, what do you notice about me? How would you describe me? What sticks out about me to you? You know, if I weren't here, how would you tell people who I was? How would you tell them what I was like? And they came up with their own descriptions. And and really, they were accurate descriptions of who I am, but more so of how God made me to be. And that's super important to identify. It's kind of comforting to know who you are so that you can figure out what you're supposed to do, because that's a, a really popular question among people. What am I supposed to do with my life? Yeah, knowing your the gifts and talents that God has given you, it will help you to be able to employ those to do the work that he has set out for you to do based on how he has created you. Not everybody is meant to be a teacher. Not everybody is meant to be a nurse. Not everybody is meant to be a hairstylist. But that's the podcast for next week. So check out the free resource and we will see you in the next episode. 
If you have not placed your faith in Christ, why wait? Seek Him and call on His name for salvation. Confess that you are a sinner and repent of your sin. Surrender to Jesus today and place your trust in Him as Savior and Lord of your life. Thanks for listening to the Real Life Faith Podcast. If you enjoyed this episode, please share us with others so they too can learn about living out real faith in real life. You can check out our blog and shop at reallifefaith.com and follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Gab Social. Don't forget to sign up for our emails to receive exclusive subscriber content. Thanks again for listening, and we'll see you in the next episode.